not protect me, but my voice can to make a difference in society, which is my community. Your voice a dark echo lurking in the shadows, but you are so much more than that. I just can't stand being quiet. I have to talk and have to feel better. My story is for my family. My story is for my happiness. My story Spoken word poetry is essentially a way for people to express their identities, to express what's going on in their lives in a way so that these emotions are no longer demons controlling them. The mission of digital storytellers is to engage a new generation of informed, skilled, and creative leaders capable of harnessing the power of media to preserve their community's voice, share heritage and culture through the development of spoken word-based documentaries. Digital Storytellers is composed of three elements. On the one hand, we provide spoken word poetry workshops where students are given a safe space and a free speech space to let out anything that's really working them inside. He makes shit happen. They make stuff happen so they're in control of things. You can talk to them. So, I, so this post, so this post says, I hope she, I go? This post says, I hope she knows that there is nothing I wouldn't do for her, for she is the God of my heart. What is this person talking about? Somebody who loves, what you say, his mom? His mom? What else, what do you think this person is saying in this quote? We connect the curriculum that the students are engaged with in their schools with what is happening in their lives to create a culturally relevant bridge between their school life and their home life so that school is not an alien element that is divorced from the issues that are really affecting these students in ways that are challenging and motivating them to learn and to grow as human beings. The second element of the program is a hands-on digital documentation component where students are working with film professionals to create documentaries based on the writing they're doing in their classrooms and any other issues that are going on in their lives they would like to record into a narrative that takes place over a nine week to 18 week period in their classrooms. The third component of Digital Storytellers is a service learning element where we connect students with community-based organizations that are doing work that really speaks to these students and to their peers. The focus of this is to reconnect the students with these community groups so that they can teach each other and learn from each other how best to benefit their communities. Introduce yourself by saying your name, your age, and where were you born? My name is Gonzalo Rocobo, and I am 41 years old, and I was born in Oakland at Kaiser, but lived in Richmond all my life. So you weren't raised in Oakland? No, I just born there. That's just where the the hospital at the time was, where we had our my well, my parents had the health insurance. And what year was that? That was in 1970. Um, how were things? in Richmond at that time? Um, it was kind of like towards the ending of of kind of like the whole like movement around change with people of color. My dad uh, worked in the community. He was a community activist uh, working with the Latino community around education, around immigration. So I I grew up around around that during that time, during the 70s to the late 70s. Do you think things were better before or now? In Richmond, there is a profound problem of violence. we found that students don't leave their houses, they go straight from school to home, don't go out at night. No one goes out at night in Richmond. The Bay Area Peacekeepers have first-hand understanding of the violence that goes on in Richmond and what it is that leads someone to choose to make their life part of a gang. With this first-hand understanding, they can create workshops, writing prompts, with students that directly address these choice points, these moments where someone might decide being in a gang is the only option I have in my life. Now, with this ability to zero in on these moments of choice and to create narrative poetic reflections of those moments of choice, it gives the students a chance to see different options that they might have other than choosing a life that leads to more crime and violence. We were working inside of San Quentin and decided it was time to come back to our community because a lot of things were taking place and we felt like we had the knowledge to be able to come and 
share with the community about change. Um, we designed it around being an organization that just focuses on, on violence and uh, intervention and prevention and giving uh, kids an opportunity to be able to uh, have a safe haven, uh, someone to talk with, um, having access to individuals 24 hours a day. And not just playing with them, but teaching them something about change where we helped, we uh, developed a curriculum to help change the way that they think so that they're able to make better decisions, so that they're able to know how to set goals in their lives, to see the importance of education so that they're able to move on uh, in life. And, um, and, and most of all, an organization that uh, pr the priority was working with the youth. Um, over the years of me doing this work, I've been doing this work for about 21 years, other organizations, um, it's a component, you know, the youth component, and they do other things. So it's, it's important to them, but it's not the priority. So we wanted to make an organization in the Richmond San Pablo area that was devoted and dedicated strictly to working uh, with youth and young adults. The first time she ran, she screamed. Either mama didn't hear or mama didn't care because she swore she screamed. That was her mistake. Her lesson was learned. Don't run for what you deserve. Leave the door unlocked and slightly cracked under her nightgown. She wears no panties because he likes easy access. We're creating, in a sense, a distribution channel to allow these stories to be spread into the wider world, to allow for this empowerment and this pain that is happening to be a known fact throughout California. When they break down, I reveal myself with tears. She's not gonna see me drinking a 12 pack of beers. No sir, no ma'am, I respect who I am. It took me a whole bunch of years just to get me to where I stand. Trusting, no, that, trusting, no that's a big issue in my life. Hey, taking the chances, it's like I'm rolling the dice. My hands bleed as they tell a story. I only eat when they speak, they speak for me. Digital Storytellers understands poetry and language and media to be a continually changing and evolving medium that reflects the continually and changing identities of these students. So in these programs, we allow for a spoken word element as well as a digital element to fully chronicle this evolution of life that these students are going through and these difficult times in their lives and in these very transformative times of their lives. Um, when I break, I build myself a paperclip chain, each clip with a new challenge or commitment. When I break, I build myself a table with four legs, each leg with a major mistake that I plan to fix or learn from. At Richmond High School, we are working with Teresa Looney and Karina Lefkowitz, a touring poet by the name of Chris August, came to lead a workshop at Richmond. There was a student there who had a poem about homophobia amongst his friends and how someone he knew got jumped by a gang for being allegedly gay. Now, Chris August has written a large volume of work about homosexuality and gay rights and is himself gay. Chris then worked with this student in a way to bring out this student's intuition about the evil and destructiveness that his friend's actions had and the larger implications that gay bashing has in Richmond and society in general. Now this student had never, I think, worked with someone who had been such an advocate for gay rights and social justice. And in Richmond in general, there is not very much advocacy for queer youth. When I was younger, we didn't have this. You know, I didn't, I didn't have somebody um, that I could talk to. Was, the person I had to talk to was the OG on the block. And he would tell me, you know, go to school and don't hang out. But, you know, at the same time he was telling me he was getting high, he was drinking. Uh, and then even my family members, I come from, you know, in my family, my, my cousins and so forth, uh, they were gang, gang affiliated themselves. And so they gave me the same advice, but they were telling me one thing, but they also would. It was glamorized, but they were doing too. They had the nice cars, you know, they had the money, they had the women, they had, you know, all the stuff. So you're telling me to go to school and do this, but it looks more exciting with the things that, that you're doing. It started with Oscar. It continues with Trayvon. The last time I checked, as of 2012, there have been 30 minority minorities under the age of 25 slain by officers of the law. In this, in this year alone, in the last five months. Um, something that I, I've often uh, said that uh, Josh and I have actually talked about one time is, um, you know, they hold the, the whole thing about 2012 being the end of the world. I was like, it's not the end of the world. It's the end of the people for minorities. It's the end of the world for minorities. And, you know, 
like how much younger does it have to get before something happens? Before something happens and it, it comes to a stop. And like as a community, we have to bring that together. Like as a community, it has to be that concentrated effort, that power, that force of of, of stopping, of doing everything we can to not not let not let it be allowed to happen, period, and to the proceedings to not let them be carried out the way they are because all of it was foul. Um, and again, uh, as poets, a lot of times, you know, we, we write these things and they're so heavy and you have to perform them and it drains you emotionally, but uh, one of my personal philosophies is you have to do it. Like anything that's important to you, you have to do because it could be important to someone else who hasn't heard it, who hasn't seen it, who hasn't done it, and it can help them. You know, like that's how I got into spoken word. I went to a poetry show um, at the Berkeley Slam at Star Club in Berkeley, and all the things I was hearing on the stage, I was like, this is this is a place. This is a place that people will let you have a voice. And a lot of times, especially out here in Richmond, you feel like you're not allowed to have a voice. How many times an authority figure tells you to shut up and sit down? <laughs> 